great day in our house there. You can see the Carnival Park that's just outside the stadium area actually. This is the Ceres Arena that's hosting the Total Energies BWF Thomas and Uber Cup. So, order of play here on court two. It's day one between uh, Canada and China. Group D match, and we've just seen three matches on court two being played. Women's singles, Her Bing Jiao winning her match, although Michelle Lee retired, so in the second game. Then we saw the women's doubles, that was in 39 minutes, and Rachel Hondrick and Kristen Sai losing their match. So, China are winning 3 0, and they have won but all three matches so far. The women's doubles now coming up, and losing even 4 1. Big differences in that. If you can get a match in the bag, that will surely do a lot for the team. Yeah, from China's perspective, even though they've already won, these players still definitely want to win. They want to show, you know, how good they are, that they can perform at this level. So the intensity and everything will still be there regardless. Okay? just seen the coin toss there. And this will be the first mit meeting between the two pairs. Uh, both young pairs representing their countries. And they get ready for their warm up on court. Catherine Choi, probably the most uh, experienced among the lot. She was there in the 2018 Uber Cup for Team Canada. So she's uh, been here before, but right next to her there is Liu Xuan Xuan, 21 year old from Hunan, China. Round of 32 in straight games. So they have had more experience together as a pair and also on One, tour, five. which I'm sure will benefit them out here on court. Taking a 5 1 lead in this first game, so they're kind of running with it. Slow shuttles are definitely catching some players off guard. They're leaving ones that they think are going out and they're staying in. It's happened a few times on both ends of the court now. And you'll see a lot of that in these first couple of days at the tournament. As, uh, but, you know, as we saw in the Sudaman Cup, sometimes when you have long matches, it really gets to you maybe in the third game where you know you it's so much harder to a keep your energy up and then have to worry about you know the shuttle speed and how fast or how slow it's moving you know controlling the game Seven, all that starts playing up um, even in later on in the tournament so it is a crucial factor it will definitely affect certain people's games more than others yeah definitely But China looking comfortable here. 8 2 up. They have a few titles under the belt, the Chinese. They won the Salux Open in 2019. And then the um, Australian Open as well. So they, you know, they have some uh, tournament pedigree, if I can say that. And yeah. you can see it in the way they're playing. They're confident. They're moving around well. I think they have some good years ahead of them being so young as well. Yeah. <laughs> Canada need to obviously try and stay in this match as much as possible. The longer it goes on, 
the more comfortable the players get on court, the harder it will get, of course, for Canada to kind of find a big breakthrough, especially when they are so far behind. And there you go, 11-3. That was really quick from the Chinese. Going up 11-3 at the interval. This is now going to be a big ask for Canada, I feel. You know, trying to turn things around against a fairly experienced pair. And, you know, a scratch pair against a fairly experienced pair. That was always going to be a difficult ask. And yes. now much more so. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's definitely tough against a strong Chinese pair. And, you know, Talia being very young, Catherine even being quite young. So I think they just need to try and figure out how to get out of their defense. That's where they're losing a lot of points. Um, you know, using a blocks to counter, take the pace out, trying to get the attacks themselves and working the Chinese around the back of the court. But it's easier said than done when the China pair are powering down on you. And unfortunately, it doesn't get any easier for Canada. This is certainly the group that's going to test them all the way, Group D. They've got Denmark coming up, they've got Malaysia coming up, so it's far from easy for Team Canada. But this would be a good learning, if nothing else, this would be a good learning experience for them, just to get ready for those matches. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. China being the, the highest seed in their group, this is was going to be the toughest tie for them. And yeah, they definitely have better opportunities against Malaysia and Denmark. But they're putting up a, a good fight in general, I think, and obviously learning a lot as younger players here. Exchange just going wide at the end there. But it's great, you know, China have never had a problem with uh, strength and depth. They've always found players, they've always had that cycle sort of re energizing. But it's good to see the women's doubles finding momentum again. Uh, Chen, Yufei, uh, Chen Ching Chen and Jia Yifan obviously leading the pack, but even Du Ye and Li Yunwei, and now as we've seen, Li Wanmei, Zhang Yu, and now Liu Xuan Chuan and Xia Yu Ting. These are all, you know, really good players who must be giving China a lot of uh, cushioning, if I can say, um, in terms of our encouragement. Yeah, in they definitely have a lot of. Come. Yeah, they have a lot of options. <laughs> And with the women's singles as well, we can see you. I mean, Chen Yufei and Herbing Jiao, of course, are the, are top ten players at different level. But even Han Yue is a title winner. Wang Ji is a title winner. So they're not sure of finding good talent in China. Yeah, that's why they've dominated for so so many years. <laughs> <laughs> it's a winning formula. Yeah. And speaking of winning formulas, seems like uh, Liu and Xia definitely found theirs in this first game. In unrelenting. Despite the scoreline, I think Canada just need to stick with it and try and have these long rallies like they just had and yeah, really gain that experience. I think they're still keeping their spirits and their fighting at attitude up, which is good. It can be really easy with a scoreline like this to kind of give up and, you know, just want to get off the court, but you come here to play these kind of matches and get this experience, so you really need to make the most of it. That's out. 
coded. I am dead. <laughs> I'm way too. This is the, the slow shuttle. Is affecting me too. <laughs> you are so confident. I, was so, well. I know. It was close. Oh. <laughs> I was well in actually. Yeah. The slow shuffle is catching me out too. I have to say. I was expecting that to go well out. <laughs> that was a great cross court kind of backhand, backhand smash yeah. snap shot. Great shot, yeah. And that's one of the women's doubles strengths within the China team is that their the hand power, their driving, all that kind of stuff is just so strong. I trained with them for one week once and I was just amazed at how powerful all their hand power was. Just, you know, warming up, doing flat driving, they were just all so strong. And the training must is also quite rigorous from what I hear back home, uh, you know, in China. Yeah, it's a lot of hours each day. Yeah. By the second session, the quality definitely starts to dip though because they can't, you know, no one can maintain that many hours at a high quality. Yeah. So for me, I found that like a little bit frustrating because I feel like at a point it kind of wastes your time when you're just going through the motions, but there's not actually, you know, you just kind of laugh off errors or that kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah, it definitely works for them and with so many players at such a high level, the sparring is just unreal. They're finding the lines here, China. Now it's game point. 26. We've got uh, a big margin, a big gap, a big lead. They'll be happy with that. And there you go. 21-6. That was a comfortable win in the end for Team China in that first game. 21-6. Canada are doing well. Remember, they are a scratch pair, so they've got to just, you know, stay in the game and keep their heads up, learn from these minutes spent on court. It's a two-minute break on court now. Uh, they get to sort of have a chat with their coaches and uh, try and find maybe new ways of handling the Chinese because the Chinese swept away with that 21-6 in 12 minutes and uh, are looking strong going into that second game. Players are getting back on court now, 20 seconds before the second game starts and gets underway. Canada looking to pose a fight back. They're a game down. They lost second the first game. one, 621. Level. And China will serve in the second game. idea there from Talia I think she's struggling a little bit in the defense so if she can counter and come forward or block and come forward it's a good opportunity to get the attack back and get Catherine at the back as well <laughs> the line judge has put his hands in front of his <laughs> in front of his face which means he couldn't call it he couldn't see it and you can see that um, the angle was blocked by the player, so yeah. that's understandable. Well, it was in. It's 1 0. I didn't call it this time. 
I decided to let the professionals do their job. Yes. <laughs> Toss it up sometime. Yeah. See how Eugene has some taping around her knee. I wonder if that is a concern for her or is that just something as a precaution? Do they normally tape as a precaution as well? Yeah, I think it's super common for players to have niggles and, you know, things that they're still kind of managing while they're competing. So, yeah, it, it could be precautionary, like just supporting the, the joint, trying to ease the, the pressure that's put on the other muscles to support it, or it could be, yeah, an injury that is not doing great and really needs some looking into. <laughs> Well, she's certainly not showing that she's uh, suffering from any injury. She's moving really well on court with her partner, Liu Xuanxuan. Oh, really well played by China, both from the front of the court and the back. Mixing it up well. Oh, Catherine did well to dive and get that back, keep them in the rally. Well, it might seem like a tough lesson for Canada, it is. It is the best way to learn when you face, you know, the highest opponents in your discipline and try and get an understanding of your level and your game because a lot of players, when they talk in the post-match interviews, they talk about just understanding where their level is at. Yeah, definitely. I think watching back matches like this, you know, for Tali and Catherine, they can really see what worked for them and the, the areas where they lost points and really kind of see what China had that they didn't and what they can then implement into their training to, to get to the level that China are. Which in this case I think is kind of having, you know, that really stable foundation in the defence, being able to get out of those fast exchanges when the, um, the opponents are, you know, hitting, driving down at you at the net and then just kind of having that consistency in like the serve return areas and really having that power and follow through from the back court in the attack. They've had some good exchanges at the net, both pairs. The Chinese are proving to be quite strong overall. So that was a great good. shot from Catherine Choi. Beautiful. The set this hold and then the cross net there. Nice and early. Unfortunately, I'm sure the Chinese are also sort of strategizing in a way where they will attack the younger, more nervy player. Talia Ang, she's, you know, very much the young one. Yeah, and I think in her position, she, something you can do if you're not feeling that confident or you are feeling targeted is that you can lift a bit more cross because then they're more likely to hit towards your partner on the straight. And if it does come cross to you, you have that little bit more time because the travel, uh, the shuttle has to travel further. So you have a little bit more time to react and kind of prepare. And that's kind of what, what you see in on. Um, the mixed doubles, the girls trying to lift, lift cross so that they, uh, it's easier for them to attack to the guy as opposed to back to the girl. Huang yeah. Dongping, part of the Uber Cup team, the Olympic gold medalist. 
that must be a big boost as well. I love their celebration when they won at the Olympics. They were just like the two young kids are yeah. just like we're so happy. And you know they've had they had a pretty uh, poor head to head against Jung and Wang in the Olympics. So to get that you know win at that biggest stage, you could see they just went nuts. Yeah, I think they beat them then again at the China Nationals that they had a few a month or so after the Olympics. Yeah, what we've seen at the Sudaman Cup as well is that you know what what confidence an Olympic win gives a player. Yeah. Because then you just you almost feel that you can a win anything and b come back from anything. Yeah. And we saw a lot of that at the Sudaman Cup, which was you know fantastic to watch and understand. But just seeing the players like undeterred. Yeah. Eleven three. Like anything. Yeah. Right. Into the second half of the second game here. Big task for Canada to get back from 11-3 down. There's a little clash of rackets there from the Canadians. Something that happens all too often in a new combination. Yeah, this is where the communication is key. I mean, it even happens with experience, <laughs> experience <laughs> combinations as well. It's better you both go for it than nobody does. Right? <laughs> That's I true. Always say. As long as someone gets to the shuffle, right? Yeah. That's a nice block there. Good defending from China. From both sides. Oh, great shot. Great rally. That looked like it was going out, but Yu Ting probably knows the shuttle moving slowly. This is a fantastic rally. <laughs> ah, I uh, just missed the line there. So wow, close. So good from Canada as well. 13. That's the kind of rallies they want to keep having, like, just trying to keep that quality and... And women's doubles, I mean, that is that is known for their rallies, right? So it, this game so far obviously has been quite short in their points, but it's the rallies that keep it going. 58 shots there. Longest rally of the match so far. And that's signature women's doubles. It definitely is. Primarily it's because the, the women have kind of less effectiveness in their attack from the backcourt. We don't have the, the huge jump smashes that the men's doubles do, so you can just kind of reset the point by hitting it to the backcourt and then the rally starts all over again. They've really opened the gap here now, China. 15-3. They are running away with it. Um, this is going to be a big win, it seems, for China. The biggest, probably, so far in this tie. So it's over. 4-15. I think Catherine's doing well around the net, kind of being aggressive, taking that those fast movements towards the net to try and change the pace on the return and within the rally as well. Sixteen four. Nice drop shot from Xuan Chuan Liu. Oh. That was a wide return from uh, 17, four. Canada. And uh, the game seems to be getting away from them. It's 
Sorry, but surely. China playing very, very smoothly without any worries as such. They know they're cruising a little bit here. Xiao Ting just has that cross court backhand yeah. shot yeah. down yeah. pat. It's really impressive. We've seen it a few times in this match. Yeah. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I bet you must be really now wanting to go in there and <laughs> get in there. Match point. Get your hands dirty. Maybe I'll see if they want to train afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> it's a match point now for China. They've got uh, 16 match points. Yes. And that was a kill shot to end it. 21-6, Twin... 21-4. The final score. Liu and Xia making it an easy win for China in the end to go 4 nil up now, China. So they are looking for the clean sweep here in their first Group D match against Canada. A fantastic victory, high fives all around from the coaches. And there you go, match point. Just the kill shot there at the net. Really well played by Liu Xuanzhuang. They had, knew exactly what they were doing. And uh, they have been kind of unbeatable in this match, you and Shea. And they'll be really happy with that performance. So China up four zip now. One more match to go. That's the third women's single that was to come on this court. But they are looking good. Before the tournament started, they were one of the favorites. I think Japan and China would be the two favorites in this tournament. And that kind of performance from a maybe a B team, you what you want to say, was has certainly been impressive by the Chinese. The players walk off the court. There you have it. Confirmation of the score there. 21-6, 21-4, 23 minutes is all it took for Liu Xuanzhuan and Xia Yuting to win the second women's doubles. So coming up. Is that a final match in the Thai? Han Yue versus Zhang Wen Yu. That's what's coming up on court two. of the Total Energies BWF Thomas and Uber Cups. We are at the Ceres Arena here in Aarhus, Denmark, and we 
are in to our final match here of the first session on court two. That is the match, the group D tie between China and Canada. As you can see there, China 4-0 up. They've won it in straight games all the way. The last match was the women's double second rubber between Liu and Xia and Choi Nang, winning that easily 21-6, 21-4. So we're into our third women's singles match, and that's between 